there. Welcome back to my channel. I'm Sarah and this is Brown Family Goods. Today you may see behind me my pressure canner is out. We're going to do some pressure canning today. It's been a long time since last year that I pressure canned anything, but I have had this in my mind. I saw this on Ruth Ann Zimmerman's channel. I don't know if you watch her on YouTube, but she is so lovely. It's called dry canning potatoes. So you basically have just the potatoes in the jar, a little bit of butter, salt, and pepper, and then you pressure can the potatoes that way, and then you can just dump them straight out into a pan, cook them up, make hash browns, make fried potatoes, use them in a soup, whatever you're throwing together. But this seems like such a good thing to have on the canning shelf in there so that it makes life a little bit easier. And you know I'm all about making easier meal times. So the first thing I'm gonna start with is clarifying some butter. Basically, I'm just gonna have this melting back here while I cut up the potatoes and get them ready. I think that one pound of butter is gonna be plenty for what we're doing today. I have seven jars here because that's as much as my pressure canner will hold. Went ahead and got those cleaned up. I put them in some hot soapy water, got them all washed up. Those are the, um, those are the Tractor Supply brand. Uh, they're not actually Tractor Supply. I think they call theirs Roots and Harvest. That is the ones from Tractor Supply, though. And I found those at the end of the season last year, the end of the canning season, basically. Um, I got the whole case of those for $8.99. I was just looking at the case. I found it in my room in there, my front room in there. So that was a pretty good price. And so I'm definitely glad I had those on hand. So I just took out as many as my canner will hold. Like I said, that's seven for me. I'm not actually sure how many potatoes this is going to take to fill the seven jars, but I think I'm just gonna peel one of these five pound bags. Oh, I can't decide. Maybe we'll start with one bag and see how far that gets us. But as I said, this is Ruth Ann Zimmerman's recipe. I guess it's really more her method than anything. Um, she has a homestead, a family. They are, um, I think they used to be old order Mennonite. I'm not sure Mennonite. I cannot remember what she says, um, but they're not anymore, but they, they still, she has a lot of Amish recipes and things like that. So I have been seeing a lot of people canning recently. Now, not just preserving vegetables from, you know, summer gardens and stuff, but more so soups and things. So I have a few things in mind. These potatoes are the first thing that I have in mind. I saw a recipe in one of my pressure canning cookbooks, and it is for chicken pot pie filling that you can can up and store shelf stable. And I thought that would be so good. So that is one that I'm going to try. And then I also saw another YouTuber um, doing beef stew in the uh, pressure canner, which that sounds delightful as well, because gosh, wouldn't that make it easy fall or winter meal to have some beef stew already on the shelf, ready to go your own beef stew. I wouldn't eat it, you know, store-bought beef stew, but that's one of those meals that is so tasty that it would really be nice to have that. So I found a recipe for that as well. And we are going to do all of those together, but I'm going to put them all in different videos, I think, because this uh, dry canning potatoes in and of itself is a little bit of a project. I just thought that today of all days, I already know I've been to work. It's about two o'clock now. Went to work this morning, got home and I looked in the fridge. We have a lot of leftovers for dinner. So I know I don't have to think about dinner tonight. So I can kind of do some other things in the kitchen today rather than have to be ready to make dinner this evening. So have a little bit of a <laughs> window of time. And like I said, I am planning on doing those other recipes over the next couple of days. Today I'm using russet potatoes because that's really our, probably our preferred potato. Um, we like red potatoes as well, but um, typically I reach for the russets for most things. So I think you can definitely use any type of potato you have. I have some potatoes that I harvested from my garden. They're still out in my other refrigerator outside and they're still good and everything. I certainly, I could have used those for this, but being that this is a bigger project, those are mostly smaller potatoes 
would have taken me longer to peel them, would have taken me longer to cut them up and all of that stuff and fiddle with them than these nice good size russet potatoes. So that was part of my reasoning for going with these as well. And now I'm gonna turn that clarified butter back on and in just a minute when it starts to uh, foam up a little bit on the top, a little bit more here, in just a minute when it starts to foam up a little bit on the top, we can start to skim off the milk solids. That white stuff that comes up to the top there is the milk solids from the butter. And so when you have, when you want clarified butter, you want butter without those milk solids because those are what can tend to go bad. So I don't know if that is required for the dry canning potatoes, for dry canning potatoes, but that's what Ruth Ann Zimmerman used and that's what I'm gonna use because she said she's using clarified butter. So I ended up doing one bag plus about three potatoes. No idea if that's going to be right, but in my heart, I felt like that was the right amount. Okay, now I can get my cutting board out, finally. I'm going to get me a little spoon ready to skim off this um, butter as well. I'm a spoon here. Let's get a, like a decent sized spoon out. And then I'll get a little dish as well. See how this is getting a little bit white and foamy on top? We can go ahead and start to skim. So clarified butter and ghee are actually the same thing. That is what ghee is, is clarified butter. They've already removed the milk solids from that. So if you want to, you can just buy ghee or maybe you already have that. I usually keep a small thing of clarified butter or ghee from Trader Joe's but I'm actually out of that because I like to use that on the Blackstone grill when I cook things on it that need that I want butter flavor for, but um, taking the milk solids out makes it have a little bit higher um, cooking temperature because those milk solids won't burn. So you can still, you still get good butter flavor without having the risk of the butter scorching or burning on the on the grill or whatever dish you're putting it in. I also realized I had my um, fan on over there in the kitchen for the first few minutes that I was talking to you. I didn't even think about that. So I'm just going to cut these into about that size, <laughs> whatever that size is. I probably should put my big old bowl over here. Okay, I'm gonna put these back in here because she does wash them again after chopping them, I'm sure probably to get the starch off. So we're gonna give them a rinse and we'll pour them on here to dry out a few minutes. I'm losing them, I'm losing them. Okay, then do you think that we're gonna have enough to fill these seven jars? Oh, I don't know what I think yet. All right, I'm going to call that good. I'm just going to remove it to the other side and let it set. I'm going to grab one more towel now and dry these potatoes off just a touch. Push them down a little. Okay, the next the next step in the process is to toss the butter, toss the potatoes with some butter and then fill the jars. I already checked all these jars around the tops to make sure that there's no nicks or anything in the tops of those. This is the funnel I like. I'm using regular mouth jars today because that's my preference, but um, you can use either regular or wide mouth. Wide mouth honestly would probably be easier to get these potatoes out, but I just, I don't have a lot of wide mouth um, new lids. I have bands, but I don't have a lot of new lids for those. So 
Okay, what next? All right, so put some of these. I'm going to do about a third of these at a time. See how far I get. We may have, I'm so paranoid that I'm going to have to cut more potatoes. I really am. So we'll see. No, I'm going to do half at once, half and half. So Ruth Ann says to use about one teaspoon of butter per jar, but she says to toss the potatoes in the butter first. So it's hard to know how many jars I'm going to get out of this. So what I'm going to do is just, um, I'm just going to put about three teaspoons in here. And we'll see how much we get. And she says to use about a teaspoon of salt per jar and half a teaspoon of pepper per jar. So I'm going to put about two teaspoons of salt and just a little bit of pepper. I'm almost out of pepper. I may, I may be out now. Ugh. Okay, so she just tosses them in her bowl, which is a good idea. Now let's see how many jars this fills. Because I have no idea. Sweet. Maybe two jars. I'm going to have to cut more potatoes. Mm, I should have cut both bags. You know I should have. You know I should have. Were you telling me that through the screen? I should have cut both bags. Oh, well. Pooey. Well, we're going to move all this off to the side and we're going to go one more round of peeling and cutting. Okie dokie. Well, we are back on track here. I have got, I got the rest of the potatoes chopped up 10 pounds total should have started there you guys who was yelling at the screen saying cut them all who was you should have told me okay so i'm going to put about three or four more teaspoons of this butter in this is the last of them so whatever we have here three and four whatever we have here is it And I'll just save that butter. I'll put it in a jar and I'll continue to use it. But I'll do that in a few minutes. Once I am get done loading the canner, there's plenty of time after that to do some other things. So I'll put about three. These are half teaspoons. So I'm using a half a teaspoon per jar, basically. Okay. And pepper. Yeah, that is completely empty. For real, for real. So we'll just toss these up and then this is the last of our taters to go into some jars. Now you do want to work a little bit quickly with these because you don't want to start turning color. Like these are starting to turn already. So we better get them loaded in. No, no. I'm going to run the hot water for a minute. 
while I get the can removed up here. And then we'll get the lids put on to everything. And we can go straight into the canner once we put the lids on. But I'm going to put a little bit of water in this and some vinegar. I need like a lot more than this little cup. I'm going to put about two inches in the bottom. Why not just bring it over? <laughs> so easy. Splash of vinegar will keep the jars from getting white uh, water spots on them or anything. We'll also need a little vinegar to wipe the <laughs> rings or wipe the jars in just a minute because you know they're going to have butter on them. I'm just going to turn my burner on. These will be fine to go straight into that even if it's a little bit warm. Let me turn it down to just two for now. I don't know how long it's going to take me to wipe these all. Use a little vinegar here to wipe the jars. Because if there's anything on this area, it will inhibit the seal. So you don't want to do all this work and then not have your jar seal. Very annoying. Ask me how I know. Also, this is when you want to be checking, if you haven't already, check for any kind of nicks along this top part. Because if you have nicks on that top part, then the rubber seal of your lid won't be able to form a tight seal there. So that's why you don't want any nicks on there. I'm going to do this one, these two last, actually, because I can see a lot of butter on them. So this one's kind of buttery. So I'm going to wipe it once first, same with this one, and then I'll go back and wipe it again. Kind of made a mess in my haste. And one more with a clean spot. Yeah, nice. You should be able to feel that they're pretty squeaky clean by the time you are done wiping and ready to put the lids on. Okay, so I'll just set these on and come back with all the rings. I also check the rings to make sure they don't have any dents in them because if you have dents in them, then they'll put uneven pressure on to the lids. And again, the lids will not seal. So you have to just check all of everything. Now I'm using the lids and rings that came with these jars, came on these jars because they're in good shape. Sometimes even if you have a new case of jars, the lids and rings will be all banged up because they get a little bit beat up in transport, but these all still look good. So I'm, I'm fine to use these ones that came on it. But if you get a new case of jars or if you have old jars you can always buy more lids i brought some out just in case these ones were not still in good shape but these all look really good actually so we'll see how well they seal i hope they seal perfectly this is the first time using these jars and these lids and these rings so you never know but they should be fine this is all that goes into the dry canned potatoes potatoes butter, salt, pepper. So that is it. So we are going to just put these straight over into the canner here. No liquid goes in them at all. No additional liquid. They will make a little bit of liquid because they're potatoes and they have salt on them. So they will let a little bit of liquid out, but Okay. Okay. So these are all in. We've got water in there. We've got lids and rings on. Everything is just fingertip tight so that it's not too tight. Now we can put the lid on and now here we'll figure out which way this goes because I can never remember. So I just do trial and error every single time. Yeah, that's right. Oh, first time. Okay. Go ahead and clamp her down. I'm going to turn the heat right on up because we want the pressure is on high, as high as it will go. We want the pressure to start to build up and get pretty high in there. So when it does start to vent, it's going to vent for 10 minutes. I'll show you exactly what that looks like when it begins. It's just going to be shooting out a bunch of steam and we'll let it shoot out a bunch of steam 
and vent for 10 minutes because that means the pressure inside is building and it's con going to continue to build for 10 minutes. And then after 10 minutes of venting steam, we'll put the weight on. For the dry canned potatoes, we need to pressure can them for 35 minutes at 10 pounds of pressure. That is for my elevation where I am. So um, I basically have no elevation, but they still need 10 pounds of pressure for 35 minutes. So once this comes up to pressure, we'll start the timer. Once it starts to release steam, we will start the timer and go from there. Okay, so this is now venting. There's steam coming out. This back one is up and this front one is up too. So that means it's starting to build pressure when both of those are up. So now I'm going to set my timer for 10 minutes, 10 minutes, full minutes of venting. Okay, so it has been 10 full minutes of venting just like this that you see here. So now I'm going to put on this weight over the vent here and that will apply the 10 pounds of pressure. So then it will hold it steady at 10 pounds of pressure essentially, which we will need to turn the temperature down because it's on the highest setting at this point but we'll wait for this to tell us that we need to turn it down just a little bit. You can hear some of the steam starting to want to come out. I think I heard a jar break in here. I think I did. We'll see once everything is said and done if a jar broke in here. Uh, we won't know until then. There's no way to like stop the process and look in there, but I think I did because I heard a noise and it sounded like a pinging. So like a jar came, a lid came off or a jar broke or something like that. But maybe that was not what I heard. I'm not sure. <laughs> we, only one way to know and that's to wait until this is completely done. See how my little weight is rocking, but not going crazy. And I have the heat down to on my dial there. It's at three at this point. So three for me is enough to keep it rocking gently like this without stopping at any point and it's enough to keep it from going crazy and rocking like mad up there so you don't want that either so you just want to keep it at a nice gentle rock like that this is how this one works so you may have a different type and that's why it's really important to use your book and make sure that you're very familiar with what you're doing just wanted to show you exactly what it looks like when it's at pressure and it's holding at the correct temperature I set my timer just before I start to press play on this. But at that, at that point, once you have the pressure right and the temperature right, that is when you'll start your timer. And then you'll hold it at that for whatever period of time. And then you turn it off, leave it very still on the burner. Don't move the pot. Don't do anything with it until the pressure comes completely down. Now the pressure for me, how do I know that the pressure is down in this particular pressure canner? is that that one will drop and the front one will drop as well. And then that means there is absolutely no more pressure inside. And then at that point, once the timer is gone, once those have dropped down, then I will be able to pull off that, make sure just whatever, one last check to make sure, then I'll take that middle weight off and there should be no steam. I mean, there may be steam because it's still gonna be hot in there, but it won't be steam shooting out of there or anything like that. No pressure should be left at all. And then you can remove the lid at that point. So I'll show you, I'll try to show you that as well once these are done with their timed pressure canning. Okie dokie, so our time is up on the pressure canner. You see, I've already taken the weight off just a minute ago and I opened the lid like this just to start to let a little tiny bit of heat out. Now I'm gonna open the lid and pull it up like this, and I'm gonna set it on here so that some more steam can escape. Your jars might siphon. Now these don't have liquid in them, so it would be hard for them to siphon, but just in general, you need to let the temperature go down in stages, essentially. So that way that if you've got liquid in your jars, it will siphon out, and then it makes it really, really hard when you've got bits of food and stuff that have siphoned out of the jars for the jars to form a seal again. So, okay, now we've got the, the um, more and more steam out, so we can probably take this off without any issue. And yep, I told you, didn't I? I knew that there was one that had come off in there. That's crazy, I do not know why that happened, but I felt like I could hear it pling, pop off in there mid-process. So I have no idea why that happened, but 
That one hmm, is just probably going to be trash because um, I don't know about that. I don't know. I mean, there's no water in there, so I don't know. I probably will toss that one though. So I'm going to actually leave the jar sitting like that. Leave the lid sitting like that off of it so that I don't mix them up. Okay. All right, the rest um, are ready to come out though. And we can go ahead and take them out. Just gonna slowly put them onto a towel lined counter. I just fold the towel over so that it's um, pretty thick. And this is what they look like. So hopefully they're all good. I'm back with another bag of potatoes today. I have got another 10 pound bag of potatoes. We're gonna cut it up, we're gonna peel them, we're gonna do the whole thing again. We're gonna can up some more potatoes. And this time I'm gonna be showing you how to do it by the, um, by the book method, I guess. So canned potatoes in water, in jars, in the pressure canner. I wanted to show you both methods in case maybe you feel more comfortable with a more traditional or with the USDA recommended method. I feel comfortable with the dry can potatoes because I've seen a lot of people do them, make them, use them. And I feel comfortable with the source of the recipe. Um, I know that it's not just a one-off for Ruth Ann Zimmerman and her family to be making and eating the dry can potatoes, but I completely understand um, wanting to do things by the USDA recommended methods also. So either way, I'm gonna do both because I think they both have their place, quite frankly. Let me get a bag out. We got another 10 pounds of potatoes to peel before we can even get started here. I am home from work today. I decided to stay home because I just didn't have much to do at the office. I was able to take care of things here, so that's delightful. And um, so, before I get too far into the day, I wanted to get these potatoes going because obviously the pressure canner takes a little while to pressure can something. So um, I have done, and excuse the way that I look because I'm just, I'm just in home mode. And all I've done this morning is get up, drink coffee, do my workout. That's why I'm in my little workout clothes still. But I thought, okay, I have to, before the day gets away here, I've got to get these potatoes going for real. I think I'm going to throw these straight into my little strainer over the sink and then I can rinse them once I get them peeled and get a strainer full. So let's try to be very efficient, shall we? We will try. These potatoes in the water will be good for pouring into soups or stews or pot roast or whatever else that I may want to use them for. But the dry canned potatoes are actually so good fried up as a side dish. Um, and that's something that we eat and enjoy, you know, a couple times, probably a couple times a month, I'll do fried potatoes with whatever we're having for dinner. So that's really handy to have as well. So there are a couple of differences in the dry canned potatoes and the regular canned potatoes, we do need to hot pack these. So that means bringing the potatoes to a boil for about two minutes before we put them in the jars. That's how we're going to hot pack them. Um, so that again, that's an extra step. That's a little bit more work, right? These ones, I think you can chop a little bit more finely. Um, or I think I will chop a little bit more finely. That way they fit into the jar a little bit more compact than the dry canned potatoes I did the other day. I was going to tell you what workout I've been doing. Also, I say workout is literally walking. Um, <laughs> so it's not all that comprehensive, but it's a workout for me because I really am not in the habit until recently of working out or walking every day. So I found this app. It's called Step Bet. Somebody on TikTok recommended it to me. And I joined the most recent um, step bet challenge. So it's kind of exactly what it sounds like. It's a bet on a step goal. So if you wear like a 
Ooh, that just squirted me. If you wear like an Apple Watch or a Fitbit or even just your phone tracks you, you know, tracks your steps, tracks you too, right? Let's be honest. Um, <laughs> but so it tracks your steps every day. And so what StepBet does is it's a five week long challenge. It takes your like average steps that you've been getting um, based on whatever, you know, step tracker you have. And it gives you a goal that's like a little bit higher than that. So the challenge is five weeks long and you sign up in the beginning and it's $40. So the bet is for you to complete the challenge, five weeks of the challenge, by meeting your step goals every day. So it's six days of the week. You have one rest day that you can take whatever day you want. So it's six days a week of walking and it's a five week long challenge. Like I said, anybody can sign up for it. There's different challenges that you can do, like there's different groups, basically. So somebody hosts a challenge. The one I'm doing is called Finally Allison. Um, that's uh, the girl named Allison is putting that one on. And this one is almost over, actually. So I'm on this is week five that I'm in when I'm filming this and it ends this Sunday, actually. So Sunday will be the last day for me this week of this challenge, but you can sign up to, uh, for other challenges that start like next week. So I'm going to do one more. I'm going to keep going. I'm going to sign up for another one. I'll probably sign up for the same one. Finally, Allison. Then there's usually a free one also. Anyway, I'm just yammering on about the, this thing, but that's just what I'm doing. That's what I'm doing. And it is so enjoyable actually. all cut up this is a pot full right here so i'm going to rinse them one time with some water dump it out and then i'm going to fill it up again um, i just want to get you know a little bit of starch out with the first round of water now we're going to put them on the burner i'm bring them up to a boil and boil them for two minutes Basically, that's just long enough to make sure the potatoes are hot throughout, not long enough to cook them or anything like that. Then we'll pack them in the jars, then we'll can them up. Well, I was going to show you all this jar. My grandmother, the last time I was in Tennessee, she brought me a big box of jars that she had hanging around her house. Um, and I was going to show you this one. It's so cute. It's like an original, not original, I don't know when it's from, but it's an older ball jar. And it is so cute. I pulled it out because I thought, well, I'll use this one. Then I'm like, that is too cute to use as a canning jar. <laughs> so I'm going to leave it out. I wanted to clean it up and use it as a vase or something um, on the table. So it's so, it's so cute though. Honestly, I might not trust it either because it's got a few little bubbles in there. But um, so I wouldn't want to break it in the pressure canner, but it's really, really cute. I'm definitely going to have to find some flowers to put in it. But I'm going to set it to the side. Try to be um, gentle with that one so it doesn't break. But I've got plenty of other jars that I can use instead. Just gathering up every single thing that I will need once these potatoes boil. Um, so I have here my clean dry jars, rings, new um, lids here. I have some salt. This is some just some water, regular plain old water, because instead of using this potato water in these jars, we're going to use clean, fresh water because this will be really starchy and could be cloudy. And then if we use fr fresh water, it won't hopefully be as cloudy. A ladle, a skewer here. That way I can get the air bubbles out. A metal canning funnel, some vinegar.
he looks a little gluey in the bottom, but we're gonna we're gonna stay with it. We're gonna stay with it. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I'm doubting everything now. The potatoes are too small. The right kind of potato. Don't know. to see the dogs and I have to show you exactly what they're doing right now. There's Clark. He's sleeping. <laughs> and Zeus. Yep. Can we just hang out while I'm doing stuff? Okay, now this is the book that I'm using. I have it linked um, in the description box, most likely, or I'm making a new page for all my links to be in one page where you can just click over to that page and click, click, click around, see the pictures and all that stuff. So hopefully that's together by the time you see this, but if not, the link for the book will be in the description box below. But anyway, okay, the potatoes say for quart size um, jars, it's 40 minutes at 10 pounds of pressure for me. It's actually if you have one with a dial, it'll be 11 pounds of pressure. But since I have the one with the weights, the little uh, five pound increment weights, it's 10 pounds of pressure. So that's what we'll do. We have officially been venting for 10 minutes. Let me show you. Maybe you can see if I put something behind here. That there's steam coming out. Um, so 10 minutes of venting. Now I have my little weight, which is 10 pounds of pressure. So this is going on, you see both of those are up. That means there's pressure. This one's up and that one's up. That means there is pressure build it, built up inside. So all good signs. Now the weight goes on and we will just set the timer for 40 minutes at this point for my quart size jars. It'll be 40 minutes of canning. So I'm going to watch the temperature. Remember the last time we needed to actually end up turning it down to about three or four for most of the canning time. So this will start to go crazy, jiggle, jiggling, jiggling. And we just want to maintain it going at a very um, moderate jiggle throughout the entire time. So we'll wait for that to happen. Then we actually will set the timer once that starts to um, jiggle the way that we want it to. Is there a better, more professional word for that? Jiggle, um, move around, dance about, shake I'm not sure but that's what what it's gonna do is jiggle down you see these two are down I took the weight off just now and it it no steam came out nothing like that so I'm just gonna slowly open this up um, open this this way and I'm going to just first I'm not gonna take it off instantly because I don't want the jars to siphon or anything so I'm just gonna slowly open it and set it on top here, I'm just going to open it like this and set it right here. That way there's not a huge big rush of cold air going in there that would cause the jars to siphon out of the top. That's how you get siphoning. You um, take something out when it is really, really boiling in a water bath canner and sometimes it will siphon. And um, the same thing goes for the pressure canner. If you open the jar, open the lid really, really fast and all the cold air goes in quickly, sometimes the jars will siphon. So just leave it there for about, I don't know, one or two minutes, just so that the inside temperature can start to go down. Um, then we'll take off the lid completely. I have high hopes for this. I didn't hear anything pop off. What's happening with this one? Oh, see the lid on that one is, is off. Dang it. Okay, 
And we can take them out now. Oh, they look pretty good. They look pretty good. <laughs> Color me shocked. <laughs> These did siphon a little bit. See how the water's gone down? That means some of the liquid has come out of the jars, either just now or throughout the canning process. Boy. Well, that's all my canning adventures for today. We will let these sit here and cool completely. So I'll probably leave them here overnight until tomorrow at some point. And then I uh, will take the rings off, whatever has sealed. Uh, hopefully these will all seal. One is sealed already, two are sealed already. The others are not, so we'll see what we get. If they don't seal, they go in the fridge and we'll use them up within a relatively short period of time. So, um, but hopefully they will seal and these are still super, super hot. They just came out of the pot. So we'll give them some time to seal up. <laughs> Honestly, the dry canning of the potatoes made me feel a lot less nervous about it. I think these are gonna be really, really soft and not have a lot of texture left to them like the dry canned potatoes did. But I don't know. I've not canned potatoes like this before either. So um, we'll see what we, Anyway, I hope you have enjoyed seeing the two different types of pressure canning of potatoes. I have enjoyed trying it. So we'll try to do some more of this. I have been enjoying canning lately actually because I got really, really burnt out on it um, last year. Once I was done with the farmer's market canning of stuff, um, I really got burnt out on it. Anyway, I appreciate you being here today and hanging out with me to do some different types of potatoes. So I hope to see you back here again real soon.